Hey, what's happening, YouTube? I'm Brian from RC Creative, and today I'm going to be answering a viewer question about making a dowel jig for use with a bit and brace. Michael says, hello, project suggestion. I wonder, could you make a cheap but effective doweling jig? All the ones I see online are for use with electric drills, etc. Could you come up with one that it can be used with a bit and brace? As two hands are needed to use the brace, it would need to be able to be kept in place somehow without the need for clamps. Thank you. A little secret, this is actually my second attempt at making this video. Um, the first time around, I took his suggestion very literally and I, uh, you know, I, I got on the whiteboard with the markers and I started trying to engineer some solution to this problem. And what I realized was, what I ended up drawing on the whiteboard was a wooden version of the doweling jig that I've already got, which is right here. Okay, this is a uh, general pro doweling jig. I, I came out here and started experimenting with this uh, doweling jig and starting to create kind of another version of it. And it reminded me why I hate this doweling jig to begin with. So that's what happens to that. Um, today I'm going to be hitting the drawing board, literally, and coming up with a different solution that I hope is going to work. Um, basically, what Michael was talking about is that when you use a bit and brace, you need both hands to do this, okay? That much is pretty obvious. Um, but it can be difficult, especially if you're a newbie with these things, which, which I certainly am, to keep your bit and brace at 90 degrees to drill an accurate hole for use with doweling. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and build something that um, looks a little something like this. Clearly, I suck at drawing. And um, I don't have any specific dimensions on this thing yet, but the general idea is that we've got a flat piece that sits on the workpiece, we've got a vertical piece, and we've got two other horizontal pieces that come off of that in sort of an F shape that will have holes drilled in the whole way down exactly perpendicular from one another that will keep the bit and brace straight as you drill, okay? Not really that complicated. The um, specific dimension that we do need here though is how tall that F is going to get. And basically, what I've realized is I've got six inches of material on the bits, okay? So I need, since I, I have this plane down to about an inch thick, so I need an inch to go through the horizontal piece that sits on the workpiece. I want about an inch available to do the actual dowling below it, and that leaves me with about four inches above. So max, this can be four inches tall, okay? And if I made it any taller than that, of course, it would be in the way of the brace and it would, um, it would interfere with the, uh, well, the uh, action that we're trying to, to do here. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get to it and bring you along for the ride. I start by ripping an inch and a half thick strip from the piece of scrap that I'm using to build this jig. The wide piece that's left over will be the base of the jig and the inch and a half thick strip will be used to cut the other pieces. Next I need to rip the base to length. I decided to make the base about a foot long, which means the base is far out of the way of the rest of the jig, so I can clamp it if I need to while I'm using the bit and brace. The three remaining pieces of the jig are identical, and I can cut them all out of that one and a half inch strip that I cut from the original piece of scrap. I use my cross-cut sled and I set up a stop block to make these cuts quick, easy, and identical. Next, I need to find the center of the base and mark it with my marking gauge. The base is 4 and 3 quarter inches wide, so the center would be 2 and 3 eighths inches. I go ahead and I mark this and I make sure I make the mark deep because we're going to need it again later. After we finish making our doweling jig and we go to use it, these lines that we're scoring now are going to be what we use to line up the cut. Next we need to mark the center line on the horizontal pieces. 
These pieces are about an inch thick, so we'll set our marking gauge to a one half inch cut. The last mark that we need to make is one inch from the edge of the base. The intersection of the center line and this one inch mark are where we're going to drill the guide holes for the jig. Go ahead and do this for both the base as well as the two horizontal guides. All right, so here's the thing. Um, I don't have an all hand tool set up. That's just not my thing. I'm not really interested in that. Um, so I am gonna use my drill press to drill out these holes. If you wanna do something else, if you wanna use your bit and brace, have at it. Um, I'm not saying you know a hand tool workflow is better or worse than what I do. I just like to make the most of my time and the way that I find that I do that is to use power tools to uh, make certain work fast. So I'm going to the uh, drill press. Go ahead and drill a hole the size of the dowels you expect to use at the intersection of the one inch and center lines on the base and the two horizontal guides. I decided to put this jig together with pocket holes because, well, they're fast and easy and really this is just a proof of concept project anyway. So, I didn't bother to include much of this in the video, but if you need help with pocket holes and pocket screws, there's lots of good information out there on the interwebs. All right, so this thing is done, and I've gone ahead and I have darkened the locations so you can so you can reference off the sides in order to line up the hole. Okay, and let's go find go ahead and find a piece that we're going to train down. Let's say I want to place a down. one inch from either side. All right, so I'll mark in there, I'll mark in there. Okay, and right here's where we want that to go. So, Basically, here's my goal. I'll line that up. I'll line that up. Okay, so and if the marks line up on both of them, this All right Michael well I hope that answers your question um, one problem I know he mentioned in the email that my jig doesn't necessarily solve is the ability to not have a clamp involved. And well, the more I've wrestled with this problem, the more I'm thinking, I don't, I don't see any way where you can not have a clamp involved in this. One way or another, you either have to have a clamp integrated into the jig or you need a clamp that you can clamp onto the jig somewhere in order to solve the problem. Because obviously, like Michael said, you do need both hands to use a bit and brace, okay? So what do you do about that? Well. You make your jig in such a way that you can clamp far enough away from the jig that it's not in the way of the bit and brace while you're working, okay? So, in my design, I know this thing looks big and clunky, and that is totally intentional in a way, okay? Because now, we've got this base back here that we can essentially clamp down far enough away from the work to not be in the way, okay? So, voila, jig, totally not an issue, all right? Um, what else? Um, yeah, I, I measured the uh, 
the dowel coming out of the hole, and it's not 100% 90 degrees, um, but um, I don't think, number one, I don't think that's a huge deal. It was very close. Um, the other thing is that I didn't actually have this clamped down while I was using it, so the jig was kind of whirling around as I cut this hole, and obviously that's not going to be good for any kind of uh, accuracy. So use the clamp, clamp down your jig, use this monstrosity as your solution, and I really think you ought to be good to go. Um, all right, well, that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, if you liked what you saw, I really hope you will click the subscribe button and see what I have coming down the pipe next. I've got lots of other woodworking tutorials and other DIY projects that I get into, and uh, I hope you'll check them out. All right, I am Brian from RC Creative, and I will catch you next time. Later.